In this video, we'll discuss vagrant boxes, pick a specific box that matches our target production environment, and create our base vagrant file. Some requirements. If you don't already have them installed, install VirtualBox and Vagrant. You'll need them in order to follow along with this video. In this video series, we're running version 2.2.14 of Vagrant and 6.1.16 of VirtualBox. Vagrant Boxes. Vagrant uses boxes, which are the package format for Vagrant environments. These boxes can be gigabytes in size, but the bulk of the box is an image of the hard drive in an initial state. A list of possible boxes can be found on the public Vagrant box catalog. When picking a box, it should match the version of whatever operating system will be installed on our production environment, so we can reduce those work on my machine bugs. We're going to use the generic Ubuntu 2040 box, which contains Ubuntu 20.4. Ubuntu 20.4? At the time of this recording, Ubuntu has recently released 20.10. So why are we using 20.4? The reason for this is that while Ubuntu releases a new version every six months, they only create a long-term support release once every two years in April. The long-term support release gets support for five years, while the non-long-term support releases are only supported for nine months. We're not going to want to redo our infrastructure after nine months, so while the older version may have older versions of some packages, it's not worth the hassle of refreshing all of our servers all the time. Create a new directory. To start, we're going to create a new directory because we'll want to have our project files inside its own directory. Vagrant init. To get started on our setup, we're going to use the vagrant init command to tell it to initialize a configuration file with the box we're going to use. When we do this, a new file known as the vagrant file will be created in our current directory. The vagrant file that has been created is full of comments to help us configure our development environment. We're not going to include these in our listings for this video series because it's hard to follow as we make changes. The listing on the screen, which we'll refer to as our base vagrant file, contains the pieces that are required to get us started. Because it's just a text file, we can and should use our version control software to track changes on it. Vagrant validate. We've been making a lot of changes to this file, and after we make any changes, we can run vagrant validate to make sure that the file is valid so we can run the next set of commands. Vagrant status. Because Vagrant is a command line tool, it's a challenge to tell the current status of our development environment. Vagrant provides the status command so we can see the status of our environment. This is very clearly telling us that we haven't created the VM associated with this environment, but we'll do that in the next video. We'll see default again and again as we work through these examples. That indicates the name of the VM that it will create. And in a future video, we'll discuss having multiple virtual machines in a single Vagrant file. Global status. There is also a global status command that will allow us to view all of the Vagrant managed development environments on the host computer. This could be helpful to make sure we've shut down all of our virtual machines before shutting down our host computer. In our next video, we'll discuss how to use Vagrant to power on and off our development environment. Make sure to subscribe to get a notification when the next video is released.